All right, so uh, this week we are going to be covering uh, in digital imaging two. We're going to cover motion. So, um, although Photoshop is obviously the industry standard as far as like raster image creation and editing is concerned, you know, just generally creating still imagery, um, it uh, it's not necessarily it, it can do a lot of other things that you've already have seen to some extent. Like it can do three D. It can even do a web page. Um, but it can actually also um, edit video. Like you can bring in video and actually make, you know, simple edits. Uh, and you can create uh, animations with it. Okay. Now, I'm not saying it's the best at either one of these things. Um, but uh, it because of its tool set that it has for raster image creation, um, it, you can get a more unique look than you can uh, even in other programs where that is the main purpose is editing film or animation. Uh, so um, although it wouldn't be necessarily my first go-to tool for creating animation, it would be under certain circumstances. So for instance, uh, I had a film a couple years ago in Tribeca Film Festival, uh, which was uh, the Velvet Underground played at my high school. Basically, it was about a... a it was about a um, the Velvet Underground, who are kind of like the one of the first like punk rock bands that existed. It kind of they were kind of laid the groundwork for a lot of, of you know what ended up becoming later on. Uh, this is uh, this guy basically uh, was there for I think it was their first concert ever, and it was actually at his high school, and he narrates the experience. Well, because obviously. Um, they didn't, you know, they weren't anything back then. They, there's no footage from it. So what we what we did is they actually took uh, video of people playing music, uh, their music, and then we um, drew over top of it inside of Photoshop frame by frame. And this has been used for all sorts of different um, uh, animations. So, for instance, if you've seen Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, right, you might have noticed the dwarves look a certain way, but Snow White was somewhat realistic. That's because she was actually rotoscoped. They actually filmed a woman dancing, and then they drew over top of her. Um, if you've ever seen Ralph Bashke's uh, Lord of the Rings films, uh, large portions of that film were actually rotoscoped. Um, and there's a lot of other films, too. If you ever seen that AHA uh, music video where it's like, um, how's it go? But it's like, it's, it's all sketchy and drawn and stuff, so that's rotoscope. Um, anyhow, um, you know, and this actually did pretty well. So, like I said, it was in Tribeca. There was only eight films that were accepted into that film festival. And the people we were competing against was like Cartoon Saloon, who did um, uh, Breadwinner, which is on Netflix. They did uh, uh, Song of the Sea, um, Secret of Kells. These are all like feature hand-drawn animations. Um, they actually won. Uh, but actually, one of the other ones that were in it of the eight was actually Pixar. <laughs> um, so uh, I was pretty happy to be in, you know, that group. Um, anyhow, uh, but yeah, so that was actually done in Photoshop. So, animation, that's really we're going to cover more or less, because uh, if, if you're going to edit vil, uh, film, there's a lot of other places that you could do that, that honestly, you're probably going to end up with better results. But there is some use to using Photoshop for animation. So, um, animation is basically um, the uh, illusion of movement, usually uh, in a way that it makes it appear that the object itself is creating that motion. Uh, it, you know, it's sentient in, in a sense. Um, so you give it a sense of imitation of life. Okay. So, um, you probably know what animation is. It's basically, you know, you're animating things. All right. Now there are a bunch of things that, uh, we could cover. Animation is multiple classes. I mean, it's, it's a degree all by itself. Okay. So I'm just going to cover kind of basic, what I would call animation canon, which more or less means like these are kind of the accepted standards, things that people expect to see inside of an animation, um, uh, that would apply to basically most forms of it okay uh, but there are certain like rules i'm doing quotes in the air that you can't see uh that you should probably follow okay so um so here's an example ball bounce all right so uh at its core what animation is is basically pose and time and what i mean by that is that all you're doing is saying that there's a pose or a drawing at a specific frame, and then at a certain moment in time later, there's another pose or drawing, and then a certain time later, another pose or drawing. And when you play those through, you get the illusion of movement. 
right? That's really the core of it. That's that's what it comes down to. Now, if you're doing old school hand drawn, you have to draw every single one of the frames and then play them through, like a flip book, right? If you if you have uh, sticky notes or something or a book and you flip it through and you can see it. Um, or if you're using a computer, you can have it interpolated and you would just create the keyframes here. So, uh, for instance, with this here, the keyframes are this pose. It's basically all of the extremes. So when it hits the top, when it hits the bottom, hits the top, bottom, top, bottom, top, top, up, up. And then um, when it starts the roll and the ending roll, right? Uh, but basically, it's the extreme positions are typically your keyframes. Even if you're going to hand draw, you still use keyframes like this. But then you would manually, after you draw the keyframes, you would draw all the drawings in between. Um, but that's the main pose, okay? Now, the keyframes typically that you want to use are obviously, like I said, the extremes. But typically, these extremes will fall into these three categories. Anticipation, action, and reaction, okay? So anticipation is the action um, before... The actual action. So, for instance, if I was going to get out of my chair before I move forward and stand up, usually a person will lean backwards first, right, and kind of slunk, and then move forward, right. Um, uh, if you're going to jump, right, like you look at this ball here, right, if it's going to do a jump, what it'll do is it'll squish down first and then do the jump. So, usually, anticipation is an opposing action, usually moving in the reverse of where it's actually going to go. To, to build up momentum, right, to, to increase potential energy. And, you, and, and it's really super important. You know, um, the more anticipation you have, the greater the action, right? So um, if you think about like a roller coaster, right, you're building potential energy. You're, you're, you're going, uh, you know, the, the, the greatest, the biggest thrill is when you, you go and do a big dive, right, when you're coming down. But really, it's all that anticipation, right? So you're on the, 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 the roller coaster and you're 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 clinking up higher and higher and higher and higher and higher right and the longer you're going up the slower it takes the more they're building up the anticipation and then you come down it goes really quick right but that anticipation tells you everything the more you see the anticipation the more you're going to expect out of the action the action is the actual movement of what you're doing so in this case if he was jumping right he would anticipate the jump then the jump is the actual upward motion um, over here, if you look at this pointing, this is a good example, actually. So if you think about like a cartoon motion, right? If, if you ask the character, hey, where's such and such? If you ask just a normal person, they're just going to point, right? But if you look at an animation, what they'll do is they'll do a large anticipation. They would go all the way back. They pull the arm all the way back and then point, right? Because um, you exaggerate things with animation. But anyway, so the actual action is the actual motion. Um, and typically, that's actually the least important thing. Uh, if you're going to watch somebody and they're doing a golf swing, right, or uh, a batter or something, right, but you see a golf swing, you see them, that they'll raise their golf swing up real high, just about to hit the thing, and you see them hold it, and then they swing. You don't even see the actual swing because it goes so fast that you don't see it at all. Um, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not at all visible. So um, the action is actually, in the grand scheme, out of these three categories, it's actually the least important. And then reaction is basically the action after the motion. Um, typically, it's the settle where it, where it rests. Um, uh, sometimes we call it follow through. So if you look when this character is pointing, right, it goes up, anticipation, action, and then there's a little bit of a bounce on the end. That's a, like a follow through. Um, same thing with the ball, right? It goes up, and then the landing and the jiggle, that's the reaction. If I'm doing the golf swing, it's they swing, and then it's the follow through, you know what I mean, where, where they end with the, with the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the golf club. Um, and this is super important, um, but generally speaking, the action, the thing you would think was in the most important is not. Even if you play a video game, if you ever played like a, a video game where it's like a fighter game or something, right? Like it's like Street Fighter or something, you know, you hit A, there's not a lot of anticipation. There's usually basically none. You don't even see the action, right? They'll just do like a blur or something or there'll be like a white slash. And then there's just the reaction of the person like going wiggling their hand after they just punched, right? Or a wiggling after they, of their leg after they just kicked. Um, so that the reaction can actually be as important to some extent as even the anticipation, depending on the on the medium that you're putting it in. Um, so after the posing, right, which these are generally probably going to be your poses, right? Uh, a good example of I'm going to punch somebody, right? If I was going to punch you, I wouldn't. I would. I would anticipate my punch. My arm would go back, right, to build up the the motion, right. So that would be my first keyframe was the arm backwards. 
Then there'd be the actual action, which is my swiping around, right? That'd be my next keyframe. And then my last one would be where my arm ends up after I hit you, right? So there's you're typically going to see those three things for all of your main poses. Timing. So timing is basically, um, it's the stuff here. So timing is how long something's going to take to get from pose to pose. So for instance, if we're doing this pendulum swing, right? It takes 19 frames. So I did all these in Photoshop too, so I wouldn't cheat. So you could see, you can do it in Photoshop. Um, and these are all GIFs too, which you can also export out of Photoshop, which is nice. So if you want to make your own custom animated GIFs, you can totally do that. Anyway, so it goes from 1 to 19, right? So that means it's going to take um, 19 frames, right? So that's how long it's going to take. So if this is running 24 frames per second, it means it takes a little less than one second to get from point A to B. A little less than... Um, one second, right? And then this is like 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 a third of a second, all right? Well, a little more than a third of a second, okay? So that's the timing, right? So um, if I was doing a faster pendulum swing, you know, maybe this would be 10 frames. So it takes 10 frames. So the swipe would go poop, 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 go a lot faster, right? So that's timing, how quickly you go from frame to frame to frame to frame, okay? Or, or I'm sorry, key pose to key pose to key pose. Spacing is kind of like timing, but spacing is actually the motion in between it's it's frame to frame all of these ones not just the key poses so for instance when the frames are closer together it moves slower and when they're farther apart it moves faster that's the spacing it's literally the spaces between each drawn frame so you'll notice that when you see this pendulum right it kind of it it it's it slows down and then speeds up slows down speeds up slows down speeds up slows down right um, and that's through spacing OK, and generally speaking, we will talk about that motion in these ways. So you can ease into a motion. Uh, basically, think about if you're in a car, right, and you slam on the gas, you don't immediately go to 60 miles per hour. It will speed up to that. Right. So you're going to ease into that motion. You're going to start going, you know, five then 10 then 15 then 20. And then it'll go faster and faster, faster, faster. That's easing it. Easing out was the opposite. Slamming on the brakes on a car. Um, even if you slam on the brakes, it's not going to immediately stop because you would just die. Your head would fall off, right? Because it would just be too quick. That's easing out. And then ease in out is doing both. So, for instance, if you look at this ball here, you can see it slowly goes and then, right? So it actually starts, it actually eases back and goes forward. Um, so you can kind of see it here. See how the frames are much closer here and then they go fat. They're much farther apart and then they get closer here again. That's um, easing in and out, okay? Um, arcs. So that's another thing that uh, you need to do um, and squash the stretch. So arcs basically is the idea that the path of the um, either limbs or character itself or what have you is going to be some sort of arc. It's either going to be a C or S or maybe a figure eight. It's not to say that there aren't straights. Some, some motions do have straights. This one up here has a straight, right? But straights are generally pretty mechanical looking. They're, they're, they're aesthetically not as pleasing, right? If you think about if you do a drawing and it's all straight lines, it's not interesting, right? It's not visually interesting. It doesn't have any rhythm. Uh, it's very linear um, as opposed to uh, arcs, okay? So most actions you're going to see are going to have these kind of arcs. Think about like if arms are swinging, right? The arms swinging are going to create arcs back and forth. Uh, the legs moving are going to uh, swing back and forth. Your hips moving up and down creates arcs. Uh, pretty much everything you do has an arc in some manner. It's going to be this this rounded motion okay uh, now there's also um, squash and stretch okay so most things will have some sort of squash and stretch and the idea here uh, again is with this ball bounce you're gonna see that it goes over here it's gonna squash and then it stretches comes to uh, its regular um, volume uh, well actually it maintains volume the whole time then it stretches before it hits squashes then stretches and you can see it actually doesn't make sense right why would it stretches before it hits it, it shouldn't actually, uh, but it's one of those things where we kind of ex we expect that in animation, and I have the animation here. Uh, but if you see, he stretches just before he hits here too. Okay, it's just it gives it more impact by actually doing that. Anyway, um, but squash and stretch. So that's going to apply to most anything. Um, almost all objects squash and stretch, and sometimes it happens in ways you wouldn't think. Even if you have a, a character and they're walking like a person, their stomach squashes and stretches as they walk. Even their arms will squash and stretch a little bit as they're moving as well. There's always a little bit of that volume. It creates life in what uh, in in the object that's being animated. Uh, so squash and stretch is super important. We kind of expect it. Otherwise, it gets it has this very mechanical 
flat feeling. It's it's almost the same thing as like if you try to animate things linearly. It's just it's it's unnatural. Um, and almost all things do. So the the most obvious thing here is obviously I'm doing a ball, right? Uh, and some balls you expect to. Like if I told you like a tennis ball or a rubber ball, you would expect those to squash and stretch. But they all do it. Even um, uh, bowling balls will squash and stretch. Granted, it's really quick and it's imperceivable. Um, but you should look up um, a slow motion golf ball squash and stretch. You'll be shocked. <laughs> like how much that thing squashes and stretches. The golf ball actually does. Uh, it's, it's pretty amazing. Okay. So there's obviously a lot more animation than what you're seeing here, and you know you could you could spend much time on this. Um, one of the things I do kind of want to make a point about is that you might be looking at these things, and it's a lot to incorporate. So if we were looking at like a, this is just some running animation thing I did of this kid, um, there's a lot of things happening here, right? The legs moving, you know, it's got to go up and down, it's changing position, his head's going up and down, his hips are rotating this way and that way and up and back, and it, it can seem like a lot um, to have a full character motion. Um, but the one thing I would say, uh, with animation in particular, but really this goes with any medium, is that anything that seems complex is just built on many simples. Even the computer, right? What we see here, it's built on many simples, right? The computer has most basic cord, uh, most basic cord is really just zeros and ones, right? And you put those together and you can make anything. Even these, every pixel, right? It's just, uh, it's, it's just a bit, right? It just has information about RGB. It goes from 0 to 256. It's, it's actually very simple. But you put enough pixels together, and you can get a really interesting, you know, amazing image. Um, and you, could you can apply this to really anything. You know, you might see, like, someone who made this really cool composite image, and it just seems like a lot. They probably have developed a process that over time they just do a bunch of these simple little things that when they're stacked on top of each other creates this much more complicated um, work at the end okay so there are a bunch of different um, types of animation uh, there's stop motion there's uh, stop motion sorry I had to check my dog make sure he's not eating something um, Stop motion, uh, 2D animation, 3D animation. So stop motion would be like claymation. It makes you think puppets like uh, Night Before Christmas or Ardman animations, right? So like, uh, I don't know, Chicken Run or Wallace and Gromit. Um, pixelation, which is animating people uh, as stop motion. And then just general experimental uh, stuff. So just the idea is that you just use a camera and you, you film or you, you take a picture by picture by picture and when you put those together, it creates motion, right? Uh, and you can apply that really to anything, all right? And there's a whole slew of a bunch of cool things you can do with that. 2D animation uh, generally can kind of come down into two categories. One is traditional hand-drawn, which is like your Disney stuff, like your Sleeping Beauty, your uh, Princess and the Frog, um, you know, stuff where they draw uh, either digitally or on paper, but they draw every frame by hand of what it is okay and so that's a very skilled thing because you have to be able to both be able to draw as well as be able to animate as well as be able to act right it, it starts and ends with the animator so it can be kind of difficult um cut out uh so cut out would be basically like south park where it's basically there's pieces that are that you make a 2d puppet if you will that's actually flat um and you can animate those uh usually especially these days we use the computer and it will interpolate it'll you'll put the main poses and then it will blend from one pose to the next for you um most of the stuff honestly that you see nowadays that are on the tv those are actually mostly cut out you know like bob's burgers those are all cutouts. They're not actually hand drawn. I mean, they they drew the pup, puppet pieces, but it's actually it's a it's a it's a rig. It's a two D rigged character uh, that looks like it's hand drawn. And there's a bunch of examples, but most of them are actually done that way now. They've gotten so good at it and the developed a system that it it looks pretty decent. They don't have to look as bad as South Park. In fact, actually, South Park that's more difficult to try and make it look as bad as they make it. It's also actually not done in 2D. It's actually done in Maya. It's in the same program that we use uh, in the game design program. It's actually a 3D modeling program. Uh, so, anyway. Uh, and then there's experimental stuff. There's a lot of cool experimental 2D animation that you would see out there. And then 3D animated, obviously you know what that would be. So that's just the computer generated stuff where, you know, you create 3D models and you rig them and you animate them and you can do particle effects and 
There's all sorts of cool things you can do with that, but that's obviously takes a lot of technological know-how, but as well as like artistic. So I would highly suggest um, watching these here because these are pretty cool. Um, so uh, there, you probably know some hand-drawn animation stuff and normally i would show a whole bunch more but uh what i would suggest is maybe just watching a couple of these like so for instance this one here this is uh the old man in the sea by alexander petrov uh he's this russian animator the dude is like ridiculously good the way that he works is that he creates let me see if i can find like a good scene or something um, he um he has glass and then he has oil paint and what he does he paints on the glass and then in order to animate it, he just changes, he'll just smudge the paint. He just changes the painting per frame. So these, this is literally all painting, like on glass, just oil on glass. And he just moves the paint around and paints new frames as he's going. Um, there are other people that do this, this, this paint on glass, this oil painting. But I'm not exaggerating, like this film took him years. And I mean, I think it's 20 minutes, but that's how long it takes nobody does it as good as he does like he is absolutely ridiculous uh, but this might be something you wouldn't necessarily think of um, but this is something you could totally do in photoshop and actually um i've seen jobs posted where he's actually looking for people where he's going to do drawing like he's going to do the paintings and he wants people to in between them for him using photoshop um Anyway, so you could watch, you don't have to watch it. I just want you to see what it looks like. Um, and there's a lot of other examples of really cool stuff. Duet is actually by Glenn Keane, uh, who's like a Disney animator. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's just, it's just a pretty film. Uh, these are pixelation. So I mean, they're animated by people. Um, do me a favor though. Like try to watch Her Morning Elegance. It's basically, it's shot from above and it's this woman moving animated on a, on a bed. It's very cool. Um, Western Spaghetti is also really good to watch. Uh, it's by Pez. Um, his, uh, something like guacamole, I can't remember what it was called, but he has a, a film that was actually nominated for an Oscar and a short. Um, but it's, he basically uses real world objects to represent other things and he animates them and it's, it's really well done. And this insert coin is like absolutely ridiculous. So watch that as well. Um, but these are just basically, um, things where people animate people and objects. So you can watch these as well. These are just links to them to YouTube. Um, you know, take a look at those, try to get inspired. You know, there's so many other things. I mean, normally I show a whole bunch in class and stuff, but there's just, there's a lot of things that you don't necessarily think about that you could do. All right. So animation. So basically what you're going to do for this next assignment is you're going to animate something. I really don't care how long it is or what, uh, how you do it. Uh, but obviously if it's like two seconds and it's junky, then I'll be like, you're not going to get a good grade. All right. But uh, I'm going to give you more or less three options. So you can do one where you do a uh, hand drawn kind of old school animation, which is what this is. Um, so you just draw frame by frame by frame using Photoshop. This is probably the highest skilled of the three, uh, just because you got to be able to draw. So I, I don't imagine some of you that feel comfortable, go for it. You know what I mean? That's this is what I would do, but you might not feel that comfortable doing it. Um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Another way of doing it is rotoscoping. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a piece of footage, you bring it into Photoshop, and then you draw over top of it frame by frame by frame. Um, uh, this is actually kind of cathartic because you could watch like a TV show or something and just kind of draw while you're working. If you do it, though, try to, you know, maybe do something a little more interesting than just straight up tracing. Like maybe try to use cool brushes or just do solid shapes or like add to it in some way. You know what I mean? Like do something with it. Uh, and then the last one is just to do a pixelation where basically you're just going to take a camera and you're going to do just take a bunch of shots, just stop motion more or less, uh, and then uh, bring them into Photoshop and, uh, you know, export them out as a video. Uh, but those are basically your options. If you run into any issues, let me know. Uh, other than that, uh, good luck.